Quinn reporting for Katie Chats here in downtown Toronto with writer-director Saul Friedman. How does it feel to have your film Ivan and Evelyn in TIFF's Pitch This? Uh, I'm very excited and uh, well I was, I was thinking you know unfortunately being a, a Toronto native uh, I'm, I don't have I don't get to take the week and a half off to just you know relax and watch films I'm here to uh, well I, I you know I'm running with my business as well so I've got a couple of compositing gigs and then I also have to prep for the the show so I'm very excited but uh, you know I'm also a little stressed as well having been from Toronto and also been a participant in the talent lab what do you think sets TIFF apart from other festivals um, well, there's there's so many things. I mean, it's literally one of the biggest, best festivals around. Um, I haven't really even seen the inner workings of it. I haven't. My uh, previous shorts haven't played here, and my my new one, which I'm going to plug here, I love songs from an android, uh, didn't get in either. So I don't really know as a TIFF um, filmmaker, but um, it certainly draws the biggest crowds and the, the most kind of enthusiastic really uh, film-loving crowd there is so you know there's no comparison. What do you focus on when you only have six minutes to pitch your film? Uh, with six minutes in my case in particular because I'm doing an animated film which is um, kind of unique to this this project I think pitch this has been around for 13 years and this will be the first one so um, I, I need to persuade them more than anything else that this is feasible. So with a, uh, a documentary or a comedy, uh, the producers in the room, the judges, the jury, and everybody else more or less know what they're in store, what they have uh, in store. But with an animated film, it's a very different workflow, and uh, there is a presumption, rightly so, that that it's a generally a more expensive proposition. But you know, I'm an animator as well, and uh, I'm able to. I know where to cut corners and I know how to make this work on a, actually a smaller budget than the most feature films. What is the biggest advantage in working in animation as a medium? Uh, there are several. Uh, one of the ones that I'm highlighting is the fact that we can change voice uh, at any point. So there's two things that are, are good about that that come to mind for me. One is we can switch our voice talent. So let's say you know we get somebody interested some bigger name we can uh... you know can have meryl streep do a voice if we got so lucky the other thing is with distribution um, we can suddenly open up dozens of new markets we can we can do a chinese version we can do a french version whatever you know without having to go back and you know reshoot anything it, it's all it's a seamless transition so those are two uh... major things uh... it's also for me, again, being an animator, there are certain things that I can do that you know I don't need to call on a crew for. I mean, uh, if I could step out like back and like this setup here is is an amazing thing because it's so light and agile, having you know a small crew able to just set up anywhere. Uh, same sort of thing goes for me. I, I can uh, I have been working in a basement, and I for in the foreseeable future I will continue in this basement. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I do see that as an asset at least for now. What is at the heart of your story? Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Well, I mean, it's, it's a classic tale of, of friendship at the end of the world. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to give away too much also because, you know, I guess I don't know who's going to see this before the, the event, but I, I encourage anybody who's watching this to come see it because, it, again, as an animator, I've tried to really uh, bulk up the presentation with nice visuals, but you know, it's it's a story about friendship and uh, some weird characters. It's sort of a, a contemporary twist on the Noah's Ark tale, picking up after the Ark has, has landed and the, the land has cleared. Now we suddenly have um, kind of a, rather than it being this, um, you know, God has spared the, the righteous. Well, he has, but he's left this, uh, this devastated, crumbling wasteland of a, of a new world. And so you know it's not all, all fun and games and so it's uh, you know we've got a bit of an adventure we have some cults we've got some uh, predators some warriors so all kinds of nice things yeah. and a cat and a bear <laughs> what types of projects do you hope to develop in the future strangely actually I I've been moving away from animation so this project is a bit of a it's a step it's not a step back I, I am excited about <laughs> animation but uh, a couple of recent projects have been mixtures of live action and animation. I did a samurai film, which 
had um, green screened actor, actors on a green screen and all um, animated environments. Uh, and then I did another one where it was live settings but CG characters. Um, and that's sort of the direction I'm going, uh, like a fantasy film, primarily live action with enhancements, I'll call it. And where can we find out more information on Pitch This and on the actual event online? Uh, that I, <laughs> I should know better. Uh, I, for me, I've just been Googling Pitch This, and it, it'll come up. Um, if you go to my website, artbeast.ca, it doesn't have anything about the event, but it has a link to a short film that this kind of was loosely based on called A Message from Your Robot President. And I'm sure everything's on tiff.net as well, probably. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations on being in Pitch This, and best of luck at TIFF. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Katie Allman, reporting for Katie Chats here in downtown Toronto.